If you're working in the garden or maybe working in construction, you might find yourself wearing a pair of these. Gloves over here to protect yourself. But the real question is, will it protect you from snake bite? Let's find out. Let's first test this with a blind Western Diamondback rattlesnake. So it cannot see, it's got to use its heat sensing receptors to find out what it's going to bite. And we have a glove over here on the left and a bag of warm water on the right. We're going to shake it around, see what the snake decides to lock onto and eventually what it's going to actually bite. Here you can clearly see, even though we are moving both the glove and the bag of water, it seems like the snake is locking onto the bag of warm water purely, which indicates that the glove does seem to mask your heat signature. Even when we bump the snake with the glove, it goes for the bag of water that we bump it with. Here we have two gloves that we're going to test on this copperhead, which is a pit viper. For the study, we're going to use blue latex gloves filled with water or whatever, and we're going to call those a hand. So then we're going to put this hand in different types of gloves. We have warm water in here, warm water in this glove too. You won't imagine how difficult it was to actually get the glove inside of here, but let's test it out on the copperhead. And what we're wanting to see is, does this normal garden glove actually mask the heat signature, which kind of helps protect you. And then the snake goes for this glove instead, which acts as your control, which is your hand. Okay, so this copperhead is in the blue, which means it will actually be a little bit more cantankerous. <coughs> it's cantankerous, Bryce. Cantankerous. Can Tankerous. And yes, I've been pronouncing that word incorrectly my whole life. <laughs> Which is nice. So it's more really going to bite. So let's see. I'm shaking both of these gloves equally and we'll see what it latches onto. Oh, did you see there? It bit this glove over here. Okay, that kind of seemed like I bumped the snake with the hand over there, giving us a little bit of a biased result. But to my eyes, it did look like the snake was more focused on the hand, which had a higher heat signature than the hand covered by a glove, just because the glove kind of masks the heat signature. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We can see straight from that little test that the snake rather would go for something like this, an open and exposed hand, whereas this is a little bit more protective. Do you need a hand? Over here we have all the different gloves that we're going to test out. We have already put the frozen hands inside of these few gloves over here. And why we are freezing them is because A, it's a lot easier to put the gloves inside of the gloves, does that make sense? Well, the hand inside of the gloves. And then B, it's going to be a similar viscosity as soon as it starts to defrost a little bit to a human hand. Kind of squishy on the outside and hard on the in the interior of it. There is red dye inside of here so we can easily see if the snake penetrates through the, the gloves with their fangs. Leather gloves. Venom Defender gloves, neoprene gloves that are a bit rubberized, then construction gloves that are rubberized on both sides, normal cotton gloves, and cotton garden gloves that have a bit of rubberization on them. Now that the gloves are slightly defrosted, you can see this one over here probably has a leak. When I put it in here, I probably broke it a bit. That's why it's all red, because the red dye is coming out. Let's go ahead and test this leather glove on the puff adder over here because I think it has the best chance of surviving a puff adder bite whereas I think the rest of these gloves except for the Venom Defender gloves won't hold up well at all against the puff adder specifically because they've got long Selena Glyph fangs. We're going to try get a bite on the mid glove. Let's see if she even bites. All very hissy, huffy, puffy. I mean, the snake knows I'm there, she's hissing, she's displaying her threat display, lifting her head like that, and she's still not biting. I'm sorry I have to make you grumpy for this girl. I'm very sorry. 
This is a perfect example of how snakes really do not want to bite you because she knows that is not her food there and she knows that like why waste her precious fangs there we go nice nice bite did you see that large amount of venom there let's see if it penetrated just putting on some gloves because I don't actually want to come in contact with the venom itself. That's because after repeated exposure to venom, your body starts to form these things called IgEs, your immunoglobulin E, which is your body overreacting to environmental antigens such as venom. So if you do get bitten by a snake, it makes things much worse because you'll go into anaphylaxis, have an allergic reaction. So the moral of the story is keep your contact with venom to a minimum. Ooh, we have a cold here you can see that yellow juice over there that is the venom itself which will start to crystallize in a while and if we take out this glove you can see it bleeding all over the floor here I can't even see the penetration holes but it obviously did penetrate because there is leakages all over so that's a fail these gloves will not protect you from a puff at a bite. They might as well have saved you from something like a pit viper if you live in North America, but we're in Africa. There are no pit vipers in Africa, so that cannot mask your heat signature from snakes that do not have heat sensing receptors in their body. <laughs> Let's move on to some cobras. The next test will be these construction gloves that are rubberized on both sides against a snouted cobra down here and for this I'm actually going to take her out of the enclosure. Now with that puff out it's a perfect perfect example to show you how they don't really want to bite by clicking this video up here where we actually stood on some puff adders. Stood on some puff adders. My English pronunciation needs work. Here's the snouted gopro with nice aposomatic banding, which kind of means it's there to show, hey, I'm a little bit more dangerous than other snakes. And it is actually found that these snakes tend to be a bit more cytotoxic and have more defensive toxins that make you hurt than other snakes of the same species which are not banded because you get different color variants and banding variants. She doesn't even want to bite. Come on, you opened your mouth there. Bite this. Bite it. There we go. She got a nice little bite. I'm going to try to get the snake to bite the glove once again because these snakes do tend to bite and latch on and chew. So we want to see what effect these gloves have, if any. There we have it. She's latched onto the thumb. Now it's just a matter of time to see. Did she manage to make a little penetration through the glove? Let's see if there's any bite marks and we, she got a nice chew on that. Look, even the ice is breaking up in there. Ha! Huh. I do not see any penetration. I mean, these are pretty rubberized gloves over here and she had a nice, nice chew on there. I'm trying to look to see if I can find any holes. Did you not make it through these gloves? Interesting. So <laughs> that shows you that these construction gloves might in fact, sorry girl, don't do that, protect you from a snake bite with something like a cobra which has short front fixed fangs. If you didn't know, now you know. That doesn't mean 100% of the time it's going to work either. Just like if you're wearing jeans, 50% of the time jeans will actually protect you from a bite of a venomous snake. That doesn't mean if you wear two pairs of jeans that it's going to protect you 100% of the time because the thing is it's the looseness of the pants that saves you that 50% of the time. Next we're going to test one of my field horned vipers with some of these lesser construction gloves, the neoprene with the slight rubberization. And let's see, straight away you can see the snake is latched on. She sees the glove and now it's just a matter of time to see if she bites. There we have it, she bit it. We have a bite, where did that happen? Ooh, I think we have a fatality here. I don't think this made it, yeah. Look at that, 
spewing blood right there. That is what happens when you don't wear proper gloves. Not that these are made for snake bite either way. But having said that, even wearing gloves, there is a higher chance that you get a lesser amount of venom. In fact, up to 66% less venom gets injected when the fangs have to go through something like denim. So even if you do get injected with venom, there'll be a lot less because long pants can save you. So it's still worth wearing a pair of gloves or wearing a pair of long jeans. This failed.